In the past few years, to the dismay of WWE brass, certain superstars were able to get themselves over. WWE tried to strike while the iron was hot, and ultimately it didn't go so well. Superstars like Dolph Ziggler, Zack Ryder, and Damian Sandow all got themselves over, and ultimately, did they pay the price for that? Did WWE not like the fact that they did it and it wasn't them? Recently, Dave Meltzer was talking about Bailey and striking while the iron's hot. Why wait? The comments that he made was, Bailey's not going to look young forever. And here's the thing. None of us are. None of us are going to keep that young glow that we had when we were kids. And to be honest with you, one of his big points is about Disney Channel. And here's the thing. You can't always look young forever. If you're appealing to a young demographic, you kind of got to fit the part. Do you know how much of a mind shock it was to me when I was a kid and I found out one of my favorite Disney stars was 27 years old at the time? Do you know who I'm talking about? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. See, I didn't know at High School Musical, the talent was often like 25, 27 years old playing 18-year-olds. Dave Meltzer's comments about Bailey that why, why wait? If she's hot right now, why not push her? What are they waiting for? Now, he brought up a shelf life, and I don't think this is about Bailey in general. Bailey will evolve, but Bailey was so hot, especially when she had Izzy. If you don't know who Izzy is, if you don't watch NXT, Izzy is that super fan of Bailey's. A young kid, essentially like John Cena's audience, that they could really rally behind her. But WWE hasn't called up Bailey. WWE hasn't even brought Bailey into the fold. She was taken out of the pay per view after she lost her title, kind of kept off screen for a while. Nia Jax got that opportunity against Asuka, which I was fine with. I was cool with waiting on a rematch to possibly keep her in there or wait until the brand split happens to see if somebody gets called up. But regarding Meltzer's comments, I don't think he meant it in a malicious way. But there is a truth to that. Certain Disney superstars, if you're portraying a 15 to 18 year old, once you get a little too old, you can't portray that superstar anymore. Or that person, or that character. But it wasn't just Bailey that they could have striked way sooner with. Because let's be honest here. Well, the division was going hot with Sasha and Charlotte... And WWE mismanaged that with three-on-three tag teams and PCB and everything that was going on. Bailey wouldn't even have needed that. Bailey could have gotten herself over with the kids. She didn't have to be competing for the title at first. She could have essentially been in the background, possibly pulling in huge merch sales for the WWE. But WWE chose not to. Other superstars that WWE chose not to really do anything with, Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder in 2014, 2013, early on, eventually started Z True Long Island Story. It eventually got to over 100 episodes. And when it moved from his YouTube channel to WWE, things fell apart. He lost that creative control. It became more of a WWE machine, and the show was never the same from that point. Now, we ultimately got that huge push where he finally won that U.S. championship. He beat Dolph Ziggler. But nothing ever came from it. It was pretty much stalled in the water. And I know some people are going to say it wasn't 2014, but hey, I like to think it was more recent than that. I like to think that one of my favorite superstars, when he was getting over, didn't just get thrown under the rug. But the question is why? Dolph Ziggler was so over and then ultimately ended up getting thrown off a stage by Kane and pretty much buried his career for the next couple years. He went back to NXT. He teamed with Mojo Rowley for the Hype Bros. And ultimately, on the grandest stage of them all, at WrestleMania 32, he won the Intercontinental Championship. That is a moment that he finally got. After being in the company how many years? Probably going on 10 years now if you go back to the majors. The major bros with Edge, Kurt Hawkins. It's been a long time. 8 or 10 years. I don't have that number exactly. Let me know in the comment section below. But at WrestleMania, he had never ever once heard his theme song. So the majority of audience like myself at first looked at it like, oh man, he finally won the title. And they just took it away from him. They built him up, they gave him that opportunity, and they took it away. But here's the thing. Up until that point, he had never had an entrance at WrestleMania. Whether it was on uh, Team Teddy Long, whether it was in a Battle Royale, whether it was in some sort of a gimmick match, he never got to hear that. At WrestleMania 32, in front of a sellout crowd, a huge crowd, I don't know if it was a sellout, but 101,000 plus people, he won that match. Huge surprise. Nobody thought Zack Ryder was going to win, and he did. He got to take that picture with Scott Hall. You remember when Scott Hall had that Intercontinental Championship. He got to take a picture with him, and now it was the reverse. 
Do you know how awesome of a moment that is? I don't know if that's necessarily WWE burying Zack Ryder because he was already kind of buried. That was more of WWE recognizing and giving him that moment. Whether Zack Ryder stays in the WWE or ends up doing something bigger after he got jobbed out to Baron Corbin last week, the thing is to keep in mind, yes, WWE did mess up, but they did give him at least that WrestleMania moment. Other superstars, like Miz Dow, never got that huge opportunity. He went out with Miz one night, ultimately started imitating him, and it became one of the biggest things in the company. Me personally, I love that. Watching him was one of the highlights of my night, and everybody kept getting mad that Miz would steal the spotlight, that Sandow wasn't getting it, and ultimately when he got his comeuppance, you popped and you popped hard. But then what happened? WWE did nothing with it. They didn't follow up on it. They could have had a WrestleMania match. They could have had so much to do, and WWE floundered. WWE failed. A couple years ago when Jeremy Lin was hot, they tried it with Santino Morella. It didn't work. WWE is often a little adverse to taking those risks. If a superstar is getting cheered, why punish them for getting over themselves? Now, we don't know the true inside story. Maybe they're not getting punished. Maybe backstage something's happening. Maybe the company just had other plans, and that huge spur-of-the-moment success just wasn't enough to cash in on to change their already written story for the next couple months. See, I don't know, and I'm not going to pretend to know why WWE kills off big pushes, why WWE does what they do. But the one thing that I know in the last month or two when I've kind of taken a step back and you know, kind of gone away from just being a ranting, hating, bitch fest, moaning, complaining, son of a gun on the internet that talks about wrestling, I started thinking about stuff logically. Was it that Damian Sandow's merch wasn't selling? Was he getting over on TV, but he wasn't pushing the merch that he should have to hold that spot? Was it more over the fact that WWE just knew that he was so over it that there was no reason to keep putting him on TV and they focused on other talent? I don't have those answers. I was listening to Vince Russo's podcast, if you don't know the brand, and he had on Aaron Stevens, Sandow. And in that interview, he talked about it and he's so humble, kind of putting over the company, realizing they kind of did mess up, but he was always getting over his brand because that's what Vince Russo keeps talking about, your brand. See, a lot of superstars now outside of the WWE are finding success. You have to look at it from a point of you are an independent contractor. Just like I am on YouTube. Now, I'm partnered with Machinima, and Machinima's done a lot of good things for me over the years. And they've done a lot of bad things. I kind of consider it a relationship like WWE. At certain points, I got the pushes on Machinima Sports. And other times, I was buried and forgotten about and couldn't even get an email response. Just like the WWE. But ultimately, without Machinima, would I have been a success? Yes, because I didn't need Machinima to get myself over. In that interview, when Sandow was talking, he realized he maximized his time. When he went out there, he played a character. He went out there and put over himself. Sandow will be fine. He'll get booked just like Cody Rhodes will. He'll get those opportunities that WWE never gave him. He'll be able to have a better life. He won't be on the road constantly. And hopefully, big, big things come to him. But thinking like that often makes you question why the WWE does it. And the truthful answer to me is, I don't even think they know. I think WWE tries the best. And whether it's Vince McMahon's age, whether it's WWE writers not knowing what they're doing, or whether it's just so much going on with the company. You have five hours of programming between Raw and SmackDown. Holy bro kick. You have superstars. You have NXT. You have main event. So many shows. So many hours. You got the network now. Not everybody will be a big success on TV. But if you really care about the performers. If the performers that you keep saying WWE doesn't push support them. Whether they're in WWE or whether they leave WWE. Support them. If WWE will not push them, if WWE will bury them, buy their merch, show them that you care, build them up. Give them those reactions. When you go to shows, don't put yourself over. Put them over. Those people that we constantly complain about not getting those pushes, and then we see them, we see them in person at these events, and instead we push ourselves over, we do stupid chants. Use that time to invest in those characters. If WWE won't do it, We can do it. 
If we want Bailey, we cheer for Bailey. If we want Sasha, we cheer for Sasha. But here's the thing. Sasha Banks is the perfect example of this. We wanted her. We cheered for her. At WrestleMania, things didn't go her way, and eventually she got set to the back burner. She was wrestling on main event and superstars. But finally, after, like I said, WWE was finishing up old loose ends with Natalia, breaking up Becky Lynch, causing a heel turn, that is when Sasha Banks' moment came. They're not just putting people on TV without any purpose. WWE seems to have evolved a little bit in that aspect. But when they get those opportunities, cheer and cheer hard. WWE probably won't ever get things 100% right. And honestly, I don't know if they ever will. But the one thing that I do know is that I love wrestling. And I'm more invested in the people, the talents, the ones that make it tick than I am that company that may or may not do what I like. But in the end, it's the performers that matter. And that's who I'm going to support.